Welcome to Pentecost, 50 days after Easter. After Jesus has ascended, the Spirit, which was promised, now descends upon us all as we celebrate together Pentecost and the great story of the early church. Welcome. It's great to be meeting again online this week. We recognize the gathering of the early church, our ancestors in faith who spoke with the Spirit and taught us the word of truth so that we too can live in the Spirit of Christ, in the truth of the Gospel, and in the peace and justice of our God. Apostles and those gathered with them knew that in spite of their present sufferings, which can seem overwhelming at times, as can ours, the flames of hope cannot be as extinguished. Let us witness hope to each other and become beacons of light during uncertain times. For Christ has said, we are the light of the world. <clears throat> Please join me in the responsive prayer of approach. God, the light of your spirit has fallen upon us. The seal of your ownership is on us. You have placed the Holy Spirit in our hearts. In our rising and our sleeping, in our work and our playing, in our joys and in our sorrows, in our loving and caring, in our touching and our listening, in our thoughts and in our actions. God, your spirit fell like tongues of fire. God, your spirit fell like tongues of fire.
God, your spirit fell like tongues of fire. God, your spirit fell like tongues of fire. Life-giving God, God of wonder-working power, we are your people looking for your power to love outrageously and live fully in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll sing together a chorus for I'm building a people of power. enter into our confession together knowing that as we confess we have already been pardoned by the forgiving spirit of our loving God God thank you for your spirit breaking down barriers within and without barriers that distort our ability to lead a life fully integrated with you and your ways Forgive us for the times we have deliberately resisted the Spirit's work. Forgive us, God, for the barriers we create within ourselves. Barriers that resist your healing work and present, prevent us moving toward wholeness. Forgive our self-centeredness, our anger, our fear of change, our lack of trust in your love. Forgive us, God, for the barriers we create between us and you. Barriers that separate us from your love and the assurance of your salvation. Forgive our busyness, our independence, our desire to go our own way. Forgive us, God, for the barriers we create between us and each other. Barriers that separate us from neighbors near and far and inhabit mutual love and care. Forgive our resentment of others, our love of control, our indifference to the poor. Forgive us, God, for the barriers we create between us and your beautiful creation. Barriers that abuse your world and deny our responsibility as stewards. Forgive our greed, our misuse of resources, our pollution of the environment. God, by the power of your spirit, free us and break down these barriers. Turn us away from the bondage of a life lived for ourselves and our own desires. May your spirit guide us into the freedom of life lived for you and your purposes. Amen. Glorious God, Lord Jesus Christ, we go into this day knowing your spirit dwells within us. May your counselor make us wise and help us understand what it means to know you. Amen.
there's a story in the Bible about the Tower of Babel. And this Tower of Babel, this particular story, has caused many people to write other stories to try and explain what was going on at this time when these people were building the tower and perhaps what God was thinking during the time. When we make stories like that out of stories in the Bible, it's called midrash. And there are many delightful ways that we can find new insights about a story when we look at the stories that are told about it. One in particular for the Tower of Babel is in a book called Does God Have a Big Toe? The people wanted to know if God had a big big toe. They knew that we were made in the image of God, and so they wondered what that meant. And so they were going to build a tower to the heavens to see if God had a big toe. Because we have big toes. And if we look like God, God must have a big toe. And so they built this tower. But of course, you couldn't reach the heavens and you couldn't see God's big toe. Another story that I've come across recently about the Tower of Babel is an interesting perspective on why God might have stopped the building. You see... In the Tower of Babel, they used bricks and tar as mortar. People hadn't done that before. And as they learned to make the bricks and bake them really hard, the more bricks they needed, the more people they needed to work on making the bricks. So they could build this huge tower of power to tell people in the nations around them that they hadn't messed with them. They were powerful people. And they had this tower that soared to the heavens. But God looked down and saw tragedy brewing because when they started to build the bricks, when they needed more and more people to do the work, when they needed more land to get the materials for the bricks. Nobody was able to take care of the gardens anymore. And the people in town who were sick, well, there wasn't anybody to care for them because everybody was working on the tower. There was no one to feed the hungry. There was no one to take care of the children. And so God decided this tower was a bad idea. He could see how powerful the people were when they worked together. But when they lost their focus on the important things, it became a problem. And so God scattered the people in different language groups so that they couldn't all focus on this one tower and not take care of the important things that God wants us to take care of, like the people and the land. This story reminds us that God cares for us as people. God has given us skills and talents, but We use them for God's glory. We use them to take care of each other. And that's when we're speaking God's love language. I like that version of this story. I like that God shows the people that when they focus on each other, they're stronger together. Let's pray. Loving God, thank you for these lessons you give us in the Bible stories. Thank you for the ways that we can hear stories 
that help us to understand your messages and love more clearly every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we've already mentioned in theme conversation, our first scripture is the story of the Tower of Babel from Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 to 9. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, Come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to, this, to see the city and the tower the people were building. The Lord said, If as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. This is the witness of the Old Testament, our ancestors in faith. Thanks be to God. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. We all have the Atma from the Atma. And as the Atma has given them the Atma, they have given them the Atma in the language. The Atma has given them the Atma from the Atma, and the Atma has given them the Atma from the Atma. The Atma has given them the Atma from the Atma. The Atma has given them the Atma from the Atma. The Atma has given them the Atma from the Atma. Wote wakachaswa na Roho Mtakatifu wakaanza kunena lugha mbalimbali kadri vile Roho alivyowezesha. Yellavarum parishutta aadmavu niranjavaragi andaru parishutta aatmato nindina vare aa aatma variki 
वे सभी पवित्र आत्मा से भावित हो उठे गबरा वारियत बिअराफ कलते तौसी अरबाते अवरगलेल्लारुम परिशुद्ध आवीनाले निरपपट ஆவியானவர் தங்களுக்கு தந்தருடின வார்த்தையின்படியே வெவ்வேறு பாஷைகளிலே பேச தொடங்கினார்கள் सर्वे पवित्र आत्म्याने भरून गेले आणि निरनिराळा भाषा बोलू लागले कुंफॉर्मी व स्पिरिटु सांतो लिस कॉन्सेजिए की फलासे जनलु गुंपलगा कोडीवाचे आत्माले निजित दिया दरे आनन भाकारे कथा को बोले धरिले इ फोरम टोलस जनल देल स्पिरिटु सांतो എല്ലാവരും പരിശുദ്ധാത്മാവ് നിറഞ്ഞവരായി ആത്മാവർക്ക് ഉച്ചരിക്കാൻ നൽകിയത് പോലെ അന്യഭാഷകളിൽ A crowd gathered and was bewildered because each of them heard them speaking in the language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, "Are not all these who are speaking Galileans?" And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes. Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya and Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Greeks and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them proclaiming the wonders of God in our own tongues. All were amazed and confused. saying to one another what does this mean but others sneered and said ah they're filled with new wine peter though stood up with the 11 raised his voice and addressed the crowd people of judea and all who live in jerusalem let this be known to you and listen to what i say indeed these are not drunk as you suppose for it's only 9 o'clock in the morning no This is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it shall be declares God that I will pour out my spirit on everyone. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy and the young men shall see visions and the old women shall dream dreams. Even upon your slaves both the men and women I'll pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. and they shall prophesy i will do wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and smoky mist the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood red before the coming of the lord's great and glorious day then everyone 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 who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I don't know how I've missed this point in 17 years of preaching and especially 17 years of preaching on the story of Pentecost. Every once in a while preachers kind of hope will learn something that will be of interest in a new way to an old story one that we've heard again and again this year i was amazed by the curriculum i was coming up with for zoom sunday school as we talked about the tower of babel and tried together over zoom to build one tall tower it occurred to me that the tower of babel is almost exactly the opposite story of pentecost in the tower of babel story the people wanted to build a tower so that they could make a name for themselves 
so that they could show the people and nations around them that they had power and that they could build structures that were sturdy, that would last. They could build a nation that would last. They wanted to build a tower to show people that they meant to stay in that place for a very long time. Their fear was that if they didn't make a name for themselves, their small nation would be scattered over all the earth. It's interesting then to hear in the rest of the story that when the Lord saw them building the tower, God decided to scramble the languages. At this point, the nation had one language and they were working together to build one tower of strength and power. But God said, if as one people speaking the same language, they've begun to build this tower, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Hmm. And so the languages are scattered and the people go off in groups. Those who speak the same language break off into different areas so that they can live together with their languages and their cultures in even smaller groups. Well, it struck me this year as I worked on this story for Sunday school that Pentecost brings all of those people groups, all of those languages back together. In Jerusalem, after the spirit fell and the flames ignited their hearts, the disciples and apostles went out into Jerusalem. They went out into the city square. They could no longer stay hidden in the upper room. They had good news to share. The spirit was upon them and they went to Jerusalem. And these people who knew only one language <laughs> began to proclaim the good news to all of the different people that were in Jerusalem that day. Now they said that there were about 120 people in that room where the disciples and apostles were hiding. So there were at least 120 languages being spoken in Jerusalem that day as they poured out into the street and shared the good news with people in their own language. In the Tower of Babel, the whole point was to scatter the languages so the people would be thwarted in their desire for power and in their ability to figure things out together. Let's change the languages and it will become a much more difficult process. Well, in Pentecost, we had one message and we had one language. And yet, when the apostles poured out of the building to tell the story, they were speaking all of those languages not because they'd spent the 40 days in hiding with Rosetta Stone's Learn French Quick program. Not because they had been preparing to go on mission trips in different places that might require them to know a different language. They instantly poured out of the building and started to speak. And the people in Jerusalem were amazed who are these? Are these not Galileans who speak to us in our own languages so that we understand what they're saying? God had said that if they spoke the same language, people would be able to accomplish anything. 
If they'd continued to work on the Tower of Babel, then nothing that they planned to do would be impossible for them. And so in Jerusalem, during Pentecost, there was one story and all the languages heard it. All of the people in all of the different culture groups, all of the different languages were hearing that story of Christ's redemption on the cross for all of us. Now it didn't mean that everybody just learned English, but it still intrigues me to think about the fact that if we learn to speak God's language together, there's nothing that we plan to do that will be impossible for us. If we learn to speak the common language of Christ, nothing will be impossible for the church. The church being the people, not the place or the building, the people. If we all learn to speak God's love language to the world around us, that message will be heard by all who listen. All who listen will understand and respond to the love and compassion of God when we speak in God's love language to the world. For if we know one language and we have plans to share God's love, then there's nothing that will be impossible for us. And no, it doesn't mean that the English speaking world conquers all and that in empire we're the only ones who are right and the only ones who speak the right language. What it means to me to speak God's one language is to learn how to love each other deeply and outrageously with audacity. An opportunity for us to share God's message of love like they did in Jerusalem. And it wasn't only the languages that were important. That was a spiritual gift for the time, for that immediate place and time. And there are still some who speak in tongues and teach others about the word of God. My second language is sign language. I'm not good at French, and I handle the English language for the most part quite well. My other language that I can use is sign language, and that's a gift. Perhaps you speak another language that you could speak to others and share the story of God. But it's not only the words that we use that help us to understand the story of God anyway. The point is that we are anointed to speak truth, to live love, and to be Christ-like. And we can do that without any words at all, by caring for the poor, by sitting with someone who's lonely, by taking care of people around the world who are struggling for the very basics of life. If we're speaking God's language, that one language, then there's nothing that's truly impossible for any of us. But when we're only speaking our own language and bar making barriers to keep ourselves safe, to keep our power, 
then we're missing out on the language of God. And our plans will be thwarted, just like the ones that were working on the Tower of Babel. If we learn to listen and love, we will share in the language that can change the world. And it's a world that needs changing. It's a world that needs the hope of the story that we have to share. Christ, our Lord, suffered and died and rose again and continues to live within us and around us. Christ gives us the plans to put this earth aright, to take the realm of God and spread it throughout the world, not by wielding harshness and anger and war, but by offering peace, not just lip service, but true peace, where some might have to give up something so that others can live with the basics. True peace, that means we're offering justice to all and equality for all. Recognizing the intrinsic value of every human being. If we learn to speak that language of love and commitment and peace and justice, we will work with God as we build the kingdom of God here on earth not simply a power, a tower of power, not just a babble of words, but true, compassionate, loving language that uses our hands and our feet and our entire selves to tell the story of God amongst us. If we can pour out the doors of the church into the communities where we live and share that message, we'll have something to say to the world. And with God's help, nothing will be impossible for us who share God's language and live Christ's love the power and anointing of Pentecost, not just for the early church, but for the church now, here, in this place, in this time, ready and willing to serve God and God's people. Power indeed. Amen. we
the church, we have much to offer this world that needs so much hope, that needs so much of God's compassion. As the church, we know God's provision for us and we share our gifts with others so that they will know the power of God in their lives too. Your offerings can be given in numerous ways. The money that we give is just one more language that we use to do the impossible. The money that we give is just one more language God uses to do the impossible. To love outrageously and to live fully in the world for people's benefit and care. Let us pray. God, we believe you have sent your spirit to live within us. God, we believe your spirit teaches your followers to serve others. God, we believe your spirit breaks down the barriers that imprison us. God, we believe your spirit writes your law on our hearts. God, we believe your spirit calls us to follow you. Let us continue in prayer. Loving God, thank you that you are mindful of each of us and that you give us gifts to serve in your kingdom. The kingdom here on earth that we want to mirror the justice, peace, and love of heaven. God, we thank you for the gifts of the early church that started the mission by telling the story, your love, your sacrifice, our redemption, and wholeness in you. God, we know that you pour out your spirit in special ways at special times. And we're thankful for those moments when we catch glimpses of your glory in the world and recognize your presence with us. And we're also thankful, God, for the gifts that you give that we can use all the time. And that sometimes we forget their gifts that you've given in the first place. The acts of service that you've taught us to offer the gift of storytelling that helps us to share your good news. The gifts of teaching and prophecy. You have made sure that all of your people are gifted to share your glory here on earth. Sometimes we forget to be thankful for those gifts and sometimes we're not sure what they are in our lives. So we continue to ask for your teaching and leading and guiding and discernment so that we will know how best to speak your love language. Teach us to speak your love to all whom we meet, stranger, foe, and friend.
help us learn how to forgive, how to heal fractured relationships, how to allow you to heal broken spirits. For your spirit and comforter has fallen upon us and we're grateful. Help us to see those who need to know the gifts that you've planted in us <clears throat> so that we know where to spend our lives, our priorities, our money. Help us to see what you would have each of us do individually so that we can affect the global scene. So that we can be peacemakers, joy bringers, and hope gatherers. God, as we celebrate Pentecost, we recognize that your spirit falls upon each of us, warming our hearts and refreshing our souls, enlivening our spirits and giving us the strength to work for your kingdom. The one that we pray for every time we say together the one prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. with dreams and visions. Upon you rests the grace of God like flames of fire. May the deep peace of Christ be with you. The strong arms of God sustain you and the power of the Holy Spirit strengthen you in every way. Amen. Mm -hmm.